Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. I'm John Horner. <laughs> I think you might have been a little premature on that one. Oh, did, okay. that, did we blow it? Yeah. Start, start again. Man. Oh, I, I, yeah. Hi, <laughs> I'm John Horner, and I got a pink fly for you. <laughs> You're settling in there nicely. So Johnny. We'll, we'll get started. The one no problem, point messing about The here. one problem we forgot about was that there was a six foot two giant sitting in that seat. Yeah, yeah you're so looking that, like you're uh, sitting on the floor. Hi guys, <laughs> down so, here. Yeah, so let's bring that, that top camera down just a little bit. Either that or to puff that chest out there. Ooh, is that better? Yeah, that's perfect, right on the money there. That's perfect. better? Hi. So uh, you guys can probably see I got something pink in the vise here. <laughs> you know, when it comes to pink salmon, it's gotta be pink. That's all there is to it. Sparse, get it down right in front of their faces and they're sure to chomp on it. Uh, nice, heavy shank. Yeah, you need a heavy hook, you know, something with some meat on it. Yeah, you don't want to throw a nymph hook at them. These you? things get beat up pretty bad, so you want something durable. That's yeah. right. So uh, I, I, I don't know, we just had these here. They're gonna work their uh, must-add big game hook. We're gonna roll with that. Their size one, I think, yeah. So, okay, so. Well, hold up. Let's go down to the bottom vise there and uh, just give it a slow roll. So yeah. See what we're looking at. So it's uh, got Arctic Fox in it, some flat, <coughs> some UV polar chenille, some dumbbell eyes, and of course some dubbing in a dubbing loop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, and I, I use the, the Arctic Fox in a dubbing loop too. That's a tricky one to, to learn how to do. It, it doesn't always play nicely. But uh, we'll get into it here. So we'll pull up that guy out. Yeah. Stick this guy in here. Let's roll it. Okay, so we just need some thread. Ethan pretty much used up my nano silk there, so I don't. It's, it's gone. I don't think there's going to be enough to do this fly, so we'll go with some cheap thread. If it breaks, well, that's just the name of the game. Break your thread, John. I want to see it break a couple times. You know <laughs> We've all done it. Oh hell, not me! I've never. Oh yeah, ever. yeah, yeah. No. Key to key to not breaking your uh, your <laughs> thread is you know having a good bobbin, right? Who Some of the, the ceramic answer. Who's the master answer. breaking the thread on the Friday night shows, man? Who's the master? I don't know who is the Scotty master. Scotty Holmes. Man. Yeah, so I've seen Scotty Holmes one time. I know you're watching right now, Scotty. So try to turn in, chime in with us, man. Do a little comment thing. So. We got some dumbbell eyes, some little one eighth guys. We're just gonna pop those on the top of the hook, cause I like these hooks riding with the hook up. So you want those, those. Uh, it eyes. might it might take more weight than that to make that big heavy shank roll over. Yeah, but it'll work either way. Yeah. So same thing as before. Figure eight. Wrap it around those eyes. Get her in there. Locked in good. And I like to wrap it around there, lock them bad boys in. Then we'll just build up a thread base and come back to about the barb of the hook. These uh, thread control bobbins are nice. You like those, eh? Yeah. Who makes that one? Is that the this one? Is I think it's called Spider, but there's Stone Throw too that makes right. one. Oh yeah, the right bobbin. We've got them on the shelf there. That's the one you're rocking right yeah, now. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm rocking. These things are the cat's meow. They they work. You can adjust the tension on your thread. The old bobbins were great. These sure replaced them. You know what? I don't know how to use those things. They don't have the right feel for me, man. But I like sticking that finger and holding <laughs> it and adjusting it with the tension of my finger on the bobbin. I don't know, man. Yeah. It's, it's tough for me. So next we got some UV polar chenille and silver. You can switch it up. There's all different kinds of colors. The whole pattern works no matter what you tie for the body itself. So we'll just get a little tiny chunk of this. We don't need a whole lot. Available at Spud Valley. Stick this guy in there. You don't need to get too fancy with these flies, man. Those pinks aren't too picky. I just found last year, not last year, the year before, because they come on odd years. It just seems like the more sparse you made them, the better they worked. Well, they get down, right? Yeah, exactly. You tie them too much material on there, they're never going to get down there. 
And then you're adding split shot, and then we're back to the bull trout game Bucking, of chuck, chuck, chuck and duck, chuck right? And duck. Buck and duck. Buck and duck. Get her in there. Leave some space in front of those eyes because we need to be able to put that Arctic Fox in there. Arctic Fox is great material. It's one of my faves. I tie a lot of my steelhead intruders and stuff. That's one of my main components. I even go as far as buying the tails themselves and then dyeing them myself. But we've got some here on the shelf, so we'll, we'll use some of that. It's a nice pink. Oh, yeah. It really flows. It's got a lot of movement to it. The thing with this stuff is, is you got to pick out a nice clump. And get some of them guard hairs out so they're not so bad. So just grab a piece. Just trim that off. Get it out of there. So we got that. We're just going to splay that stuff out nice and pull out some of those guard hairs that's probably enough so the key thing was sparse so I'm just gonna do a really small little dubbing loop this is probably where I'll break the thread but it's okay if it happens it happens lock her in there where's my dub and twister uh oh there it is Again, now with this stuff, this is where the wax is important because it'll slide on you. So we got that. We're going to stick that in the loop. Get her in there and then we're going to splay her out. Stuff is tricky. I mean, there's easier ways of tying pink salmon flies, but... I like the challenge, difficult tricks to it. Yeah, if you're looking for pink uh, pink fly or pink salmon flies, if you just punch in on Friday Night Flies on our website, FridayNightFlies.com, there is a plethora of catchy, fishy pink salmon flies. You just type it in the search bar and it'll come up with a freaking about 10 pages of them. Yeah. That's one thing that we like tying is different pink flies because throughout the season, it just kind of seems like you're, you're going through them, cycling through them. They might get onto you. Or next week they're like in chartreuse. The week after they're wanting pink. And then yeah, you got to play around in different colors for sure. So you grab all these fibers here and you got to kind of pull them back as you wrap and get them to splay out. Oh, and I bumped that camera again. That's going to get me. Gonna do these dubbing loops. It's almost like you need to uh, throw down the rotary part of your vise sometimes, eh? Yeah. It's just hard to splay the fibers back yeah, as you as you rotate it. Yeah. So sometimes you can't use it. One more wrap. That Arctic it. Fox looks fantastic. When when you first pulled that out and I was watching you tie your your demo, I thought you were using craft fur because it's as supple as uh craffer yeah you know but it actually has better flow than craffer speaking of that you know like if you can't get arctic fox there's another great product out there i'm going to try and get them to get it in, in the shop here it's called fair flies it's a craffer but it is probably the most supple craffer there is on the market that's real man I, i'd tie a ton of flies with craffer and you can so cheap. you can use it the same way you would with Arctic Fox in a dubbing loop or whatever, even just laid out on a wing or reverse tide, there's a lot of ways of doing it. So we got that in, and I'm just gonna comb that out a bit. Get her laying in there. So we got that silver chenille in there, add a little bit of flash effect. And then I've got some of that fly angler distribution crinkle flash. Mirror flash. This one's in red. Shout just, out to our good boys there, Robbie. We're just going to throw a few strands of that in there. If I can get it out of the package. One of my tricks for flash is cutting the corner off the package so you can just pick a few strands out instead of it getting all messed up on your table. 
If you don't do that, it ends up looking all mangled up like that. <laughs> What's wrong with that, John? <laughs> if you like mangled up stuff, sure. So then we'll stuff that in there. Not very long, you just need a little bit in there. Again, just keeping it sparse. Couple more, and then we'll bring that guy over. Hold down, lock it in. And then we'll trim that off kind of even. Let's get a look and make sure she's even in there. I don't know about you guys, but I am looking forward to pink salmon fly fishing this year. It's going to be fun, man. It's it's one of the best fisheries there is for fly fishing. Because, I mean, sometimes, like, coho and chum and chinook can be a little bit on the overpowering side. Chum is like a five, six-pound fish that you can catch every other cast, and they fight like freaking lunatics, man. They're aerial. They love to display themselves. And they'll jump probably 15 times before you land them. Heck yeah. And they're manageable. They're a manageable fish. I mean, so women can handle no problem with a fly rod, kids, men. But I mean, by the end of the day, you've caught so many, it'll wear you right out. So we're going to do another dubbing loop to just kind of finish off the head. And we're going to use UV fluorescent hot pink. Again, you could contrast it and change it, go with a, like a shrimp pink or something, right? Chartreuse. Chartreuse even. Yeah, dude. Purple. Sometimes even red. Yeah, black is good with them. This is just more to cover up those dumbbell eyes and finish it off, give it a little bit of look. You could probably just fish it this way even. Yeah. Not gonna worry about the wax with this. This is like I say, just to cover up the ugliness of the eyes. Spread that out, give her a spin. And we'll just wrap that stuff up. So I go kind of figure eight over the eyes, just like I say, I cover them up. It's it. funny, the more you tie those, the, the little tweaks you throw to them. Mm -hmm. You know, like I like that one better than the first one you tied, Johnny. Yeah, that, you know, the first one that I had there, I... You filled it in. This one is a little bit more sparse, man. But the, the hackle or the, sorry, the fox, Arctic fox there, I had a little longer off the back. It's almost just a little too much with that last one. And that's really it. We'll just whip finish that off. You should, we'll, you should tie another one with a chartreuse dubbing on the head. And then we could uh, just comb that out. Like Brad said, like you could do the same thing and take take a nice hot chartreuse or something and, and tie that head in. Just give it a little brush. Man, that's awesome. That's a nice fly, John. You remind me a little myself. <laughs> just a little. Uh, and then, I mean, you could finish it off with some kind of head cement. We just happen to have this UV cure, so we'll just use that. <clears throat> just a little drop on there, nothing spectacular. Let's just hold that together a little better. Hit that with the light. Yeah. Uh, you can change your eye colors too. I mean, you can get pink dumbbell eyes and whatever color. I just had red ones, so we went with that. But real sparse. Should get down with that weight. And that's that, man. That's a great pattern, John. Yeah. Okay, we'll go up to level three there, and you can uh, you can sign out, and we'll carry on. Maybe so, I'll talk to you before we leave. Maybe I'll talk you into doing with a chartreuse head. Or something, we'll see. Okay. But that's it. She's done. Get out there and fish them, guys. Uh, pretty simple stuff to tie. When can people start to see some pink salmon around? Oh, end of July. They start, should be coming in, I think. And then... Uh, I think we got our first was like, uh, like the 21st, I think, of July or something yeah. two years ago. So anywhere in that window and then it was pretty full on by the time mid-August rolls in. If you if you can't catch a mid-August, there's something wrong. Just about finding that run with a minute.
That's right. Make sure you, uh, if you guys are thinking of coming up and joining us for the Pink Salmon this year, make sure you book now because there's not much availability. Yeah, now. get on PembertonFishFinder.com and search us out. Come for a trip. I'll take you guys out and get you into them. Yeah, and if uh, you're having troubles with PembertonFishFinder.com, check out FlyFishing.Tours. There you go. That's pretty easy. That's that, guys. We'll uh, see you next time.